Over the past few years of managing over 20 Chase credit cards, I've noticed some really costly mistakes that I'm surprised almost everyone makes. Chase cards offer some of the best rewards, travel perks, and signup bonuses, but if you have a Chase credit card, chances are you're leaving money and points on the table because nobody told you how to truly maximize their value. So in this video, I'll break down the 10 most common mistakes people make with their Chase credit cards, whether you're using a no annual fee card like the Freedom Flex, or a premium card like the Sapphire Reserve. These are big mistakes you want to avoid and I'll show you exactly how to do that and how to get the most value out of your Chase credit cards. Before we dive in, I just wanna thank all of you who helped me reach 4,000 subscribers. It's been almost two years since I started this channel and looking back, I didn't really know what to expect. I just knew that credit cards were something I really enjoy talking about and I felt I could help people get the most value out of them. Even though my channel is pretty small by YouTube standards, it feels awesome to see all of you who watch my videos and comment and use my links and I'm honestly so grateful for that. I'm really looking forward to the next few videos that are coming out for you, and I'm constantly looking to make my channel better and more valuable. So don't ever be afraid to reach out with your comments and thoughts below because I do read every single comment on this channel. With all that said, let's dive right in and get started with mistake number one on this list. The first common mistake I see people make which leaves easy money on the table but has a pretty simple fix is not activating Chase offers. These are free deals with select retailers where you can earn additional cash back and essentially it's free money. Each month, Chase works with tons of retailers like Men's Warehouse, Chevron, and w Lululemon, YouTube TV, Kindle, and more. You can earn some cash back for shopping at that retailer on top of what you already earn in points on your credit card. For example, currently there's 10% cash back at Papa John's. I found these deals are always easy to earn, but the trick is you do need to activate them, which can be time consuming and they're always changing. But thankfully there are free and paid tools out there that make it easy to activate all offers across all your Chase credit cards in about 30 seconds. My favorite tool to do this is the Card Pointers Chrome extension. When you log into your Chase account, you can activate all Chase offers on each card with just a few clicks. Card Pointers also has a paid version, which will automatically activate these offers for you. And once you activate those, you'll automatically get a statement credit for any cashback you earn. However, besides Chase offers, there's a little known way you can potentially earn more points for certain spending categories through a special link on Chase's website. Offers here are similar to the Freedom Flex's rotating 5% categories, but can apply to any Chase credit card. The catch is they're only available to targeted card holders. To find these bonuses, you can go to chase.com slash mybonus and enter your details to see if you have an offer. The My Bonus offers usually provide five to 10X points in select categories, mainly for co-branded credit cards. Currently, many people are seeing Chase My Bonus offers for 5X or 7X, on grocery stores, gas stations, and home improvement stores. And it never hurts to jump in and see if you have any of these free offers on your credit cards. Mistake number two on this list is missing out on higher welcome bonuses. Chase is constantly changing the bonus on major cards like the Freedom Flex, Freedom Unlimited, and Sapphire Preferred. This means sometimes you miss out on a higher bonus by applying just before they increase the bonus or after it ends. However, if you apply within 90 days of an elevated bonus, Chase has been known to match you to the higher welcome offer. I did this back when I applied for a Chasing business card with a 75,000 point welcome bonus. Previously, it had a 90,000 point welcome bonus. And when I messaged Chase asking if they could match that 90,000 point bonus, they said that they would. And since I had already met the minimum spend requirement, they immediately sent me 15,000 Chase points. To be able to do this, you need to have met the minimum spend requirement on your current bonus and have been approved for the card no more than 90 days from the elevated bonus. However, Chase can be more strict and some report that you need to reach out within 30 days of the elevated bonus. I'd recommend you reach out to Chase through their secured message center in the app or online. And here's an example of the message that I used to reach out to them. Another great welcome bonus feature with Chase is that you can often get a welcome bonus on the same credit card more than once. As long as you've waited at least 48 months, since you last received the bonus for that card. This means over the years, you could reapply for cards like the Freedom Flex or the Sapphire Preferred and earn the bonus again, making those cards even more valuable to get. Moving on, another common mistake I see people make with their Chase credit cards, which can hurt their credit, is canceling their credit cards. Canceling a card negatively impacts your credit score because the age of the credit card helps increase your score over time. It's almost never necessary to cancel a Chase card and doing so stops the card from aging, 
which would otherwise benefit your credit. If you want to avoid an annual fee, for example, instead of canceling, you can downgrade a card to the no annual fee option. This is called product changing or downgrading, and it applies to most Chase credit cards as long as they're within the same family of cards. For example, if you have the Sapphire Reserve with a $550 annual fee, instead of canceling, you could downgrade to the Sapphire Preferred for just a $95 annual fee. And you can even downgrade to a no annual fee card like the Freedom Flex. Doing this will preserve the age and credit history of that card, and it will continue to build up your credit. You cannot downgrade cards across different families, such as a hotel credit card like the IHG Premier, to the Freedom Flex. Downgrade must be within the same card family. But you could, for example, downgrade the IHG Premier to the no annual fee option like the IHG Traveler instead. The next common mistake people make with Chase that often leads to card denials is not respecting the 524 rule. The 524 rule is a Chase policy that says you can't be approved for a Chase card if you've opened five or more credit cards from any issuer in the last 24 months. Ignoring this rule will almost always lead to a denial even if you have a great credit score. So it's important to be mindful of how many credit cards you've opened recently before applying for a Chase credit card. If you're nearing the five card limit, it's usually better to hold off on new applications to stay eligible for Chase credit cards. Keep in mind, business credit cards are subject to the 524 rule, but they do not add to the count. For example, if you're at 424, you could still open multiple Chase business cards and remain at 424. And this can play into a really good Chase strategy. So opening business cards between personal applications can be a very helpful strategy for staying under 524. Moving on, another mistake people often make with Chase credit cards is not using the option to combine credit limits between cards. Chase allows you to combine credit limits from one card to another. For example, if your Chase Sapphire Preferred has a $10,000 credit limit and your Freedom Unlimited only has a $1,000 limit, you can call Chase and move, say, $5,000 from the Sapphire over to the Freedom. This provides an easy way to manage your credit, boost your card, limits and keep your credit utilization low without closing accounts or applying for new credit. This can also help if Chase isn't willing to extend more credit when you apply for a new card, because oftentimes you can transfer part of the limit from an existing card to a new card in order to get that approval. The next mistake is a big one, and that is undervaluing Chase Ultimate Reward Points. These points come from cards like the Freedom Unlimited, Freedom Flex, Sapphire Preferred, Sapphire Reserve, and most of the Inc. business cards. Many card holders will just cash out these points at one cent per point, but by doing that, you're missing out on much greater value. That's because if you hold either the Sapphire Preferred or Sapphire Reserve or the Inc. Business Preferred, Chase gives you access to transfer points to hotel and airline partners for free. You can transfer your points to partners like Hyatt, United, Southwest, and others at a one-to-one -one ratio, making them two to three times more valuable for flights or hotel stays. Personally, this strategy has unlocked incredible travel experiences for my family, like business class flights and over 60 hotel nights, all without spending extra money to do that. So if you're only using your points for cash back, you're leaving significant value on the table by missing out on some of these higher value travel redemptions. Another mistake I see people make when trying to get more value for their Chase points is relying on the Chase travel portal. While it's true that with the Sapphire Preferred or Sapphire Reserve, you get either 25% or 50% more value on travel booked through the portal, it's not always the best option. In some cases, I'd consider it mostly for economy flights, but generally, transferring your points to hotel and airline partners offers better value. For example, let's compare booking a hotel through the travel portal versus transferring points. We can look at the Hyatt Regency Huntington Beach in Southern California. On October 10th, for example, booking through the portal, it costs around 38,000 points per night. Since the cash price is about $460, you're getting around 1.25 cent per point if you're using a card like the Sapphire Preferred. Even with a 25% boost from using the Preferred, it's still not the best value compared to transferring your points. If instead you transfer your points to Hyatt and book directly, the same hotel on the same exact date will cost just 25,000 points per night, giving you a much better value of 1.8 cents per point. So while the travel portal does offer some flexibility, 
it's always best to check transfer options first to get the best value for your points. The next mistake is a big one I see people make, which is not combining their ultimate rewards points across Chase credit cards and between household members. If you have multiple Chase cards like the Freedom Unlimited, the Freedom Flex, and the Sapphire cards, you can pool all your points together to maximize their value. You can also combine points between household members, which gives you even more flexibility to use the points where they might have the most value. For example, if one person has the Sapphire Preferred or Reserve, they can receive points from the other household members and transfer them to travel partners for greater value. On top of that, referring household members to Chase credit cards can earn you a nice bonus. Chase offers 5,000 to 40,000 points for each successful referral depending on the credit card. By combining points and making referrals, you unlock more redemption options and you can significantly increase the value of your rewards. Another big common mistake that I see is being afraid to get multiple Chase credit cards and this is often due to a misunderstanding. Many people worry that holding several cards will hurt their credit or be difficult to manage. But in reality, having multiple cards can be beneficial for your credit over time and is a very smart way to maximize your rewards. And this can allow you to create one of the most powerful credit card combinations called the Chase Trifecta. The Chase Trifecta is a strategic combination of three cards, including the Chase Freedom Unlimited, Chase Freedom Flex, and the Sapphire Preferred or Sapphire Reserve. Each card plays a unique role in maximizing your rewards. The Freedom Unlimited earns 1.5x points on all purchases Purchases, which is great for everyday spending that doesn't fall into a bonus category. The Freedom Flex earns 5x points on rotating quarterly categories, which can include things like groceries, gas, Walmart, PayPal, and others. And this provides a massive boost for targeted spending categories. Then you have the Sapphire Preferred or Sapphire Reserve, which is the key to unlocking even more value by transferring points to Chase's travel partners. The Sapphire Preferred earns 2x points on travel and 3x on dining, online grocery, and select streaming, while the Reserve earns 3x on travel and dining, making it perfect for anyone who travels or eats out. Most importantly, either Sapphire card lets you transfer all points to valuable travel partners like United or Hyatt, unlocking far more value than using them for just cash back. Together, this Chase Trifecta combination lets you maximize your earning across multiple categories categories, pool your points, and redeem them for much higher value when transferred to travel partners. So don't be afraid to apply for multiple Chase credit cards because with the right strategy, like using the Chase Trifecta, you can dramatically increase your rewards and get more out of every dollar you spend. The next big mistake I see people make is overlooking the Chase Inc. business cards. These cards might not seem as exciting as the personal ones at first, but they offer some of the best value in the Chase lineup and really across all business credit cards. The Inc. Business Unlimited currently has a very nice 90,000 point welcome bonus with no annual fee, and the other no annual fee Inc. Business Cash card can earn you some very valuable rewards at office supply stores. Plus, the Inc. Business Cash has a great 75,000 point welcome bonus. Another great Inc. card is the Inc. Business Preferred, which gives you access to transfer partners just like the Sapphire cards, allowing you to get even more value from your points. The sign-up bonuses on all these cards are often some of the highest available making them a great way to boost your points quickly. And personally, this was a huge factor in being able to earn over a million chase points over the last year. Even if you don't run a traditional business, you may still qualify for these credit cards through side gigs or freelance work. So don't miss out on these cards just because they're labeled as business cards there's serious value here for maximizing your points. If you wanna learn more about Chase credit cards, I did a deep dive on the Chase Trifecta, as well as a video on how to redeem your Chase points for maximum value. But that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.